What is up, guys? It's so good to finally be back. I'm sorry about my voice, I caught a cold this week, but I have to finish this before school starts again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn these two cheap fisheye lenses into a crazy ultra wide angle lens. Make sure you stay until the end of the video because I will actually be giving away one of the lenses for free. I know that not all my viewers are from North America, but I will ship it to anywhere in the world. Alright, before I talk about the fisheye lenses, I just want to say that there are 12mm rectilinear ultra wide angle lenses made for crop sensors. If you just want a good ultra wide angle lens, you could just pay a little extra and get those. But from my experience, fisheye lenses are much more fun to shoot with. Both of these were designed for the APS-C sensor, but they both have Micro Four Thirds variants. I tested them on an A7R2 on crop mode, and they work just as well. The Samyang is an 8mm, priced at $259. The 7 Artisans is a 7.5mm, priced at $139. Max aperture is f2.8 for both lenses. I left the purchase link in the description. They're both fisheye lenses, meaning everything looks round and bubbly. But with that, you get about 180 degrees of viewing angle. With the 7 Artisans being just a little wider because it's 7.5mm versus 8mm. Sometimes I accidentally get my fingers in the shot from adjusting the focus. Yes, it's that wide. They both have very solid feeling build quality, but I would say that the 7 Artisans, it's much more compact. It has a smaller body while having an even larger front element, but the size of the elements doesn't really matter a whole lot. The 7 Artisans has a simple friction lens cap, while the Samyang has a clip-on lens cap. By the way, the focusing tab is not a part of the lens. It's an add-on I got from 7 Artisans. Both focusing rings are nicely dampened. The Samyang has a clicking aperture ring, while the 7 Artisans has a declicked aperture ring. It's not good or bad, it's just what people prefer. For example, filmmakers prefer declicked rings. That's why cine lenses are often declicked. Now, I didn't want to make this a clickbait, so I'm going to first show you how you can turn these two lenses into ultra wide angle lenses. The main idea is to correct the fisheye distortion into rectilinear in post. You can use any software you like, but Lightroom is my go to option because it has the lens profiles built in. Just select the lens you shot with, and Lightroom will do the rest for you. You can even change the amount of distortion and vignetting you want to correct for. The same method applies to video too. If it's so simple and effective, why don't many people use it? So I read a few articles, and it basically comes down to these two points. Since rectilinear does not mean no distortion, the steep fishing method will make the corners very stretched out, and those heavily stretched parts have less pixel density than the center of the photo, making the corners not as clear as it could be. Here is my response to those complaints. Any ultra wide angle lens will have the same stretching effect around the edges. It doesn't matter how much you spend or which company you buy from. All rectilinear ultra wide angle lens will stretch around the edges. But in general, the wider you go, the more stretched the corners are. They say, a good crop makes a good photo. Since you actually get about 180 degrees angle of view from these lenses, you can always crop in a bit to get rid of the parts that stretched out a bit too much. With this, you can actually make very usable and good photos. Let me show you what I mean. First of all, this photo was shot very poorly. I didn't even expose it correctly. I started by correcting the light and colors to make it at least somewhat usable. Then I added the lens correction profile to make the photo rectilinear. After that, I played around with the transformation, meaning the vertical transformation to compensate for the angle I shot at. Now it's starting to look okay already. And you see, in essence, I just shifted things around and cropped out the ugly parts of the photo. Then I added some additional color adjustments. The result is just night and day. And this is definitely repeatable. I've done it over and over. If I can, you can too. And for a lot of architecture shots, there's absolutely no need to do much transformation adjustments because they already look really good after the defishing method I just showed you. And you know what the best part is? With this method, you actually get to choose whether you want the fisheye look or the rectilinear ultra wide look or even somewhere in between. Even after a full rectilinear conversion, the angle of view will still be much wider than almost every ultra wide angle lens out there. There's just so much flexibility with the setup. As you can see, they all turn out very nicely. I might even print out some and use them as wall posters around the house. The only thing I have to warn you guys about is that you have to be very careful when you shoot people with this defishing method. If not framed just right, your model might come out to look like Slenderman or something. It's just harder to frame the fisheye lens because you don't get to see the rectilinear photo in your viewfinder. In terms of image quality, the Samyang definitely comes on top if you pixel peep, and it handles chromatic aberration much better than the 7 Artisans can, though you can often fix that in post. But the 7 Artisans has a specialty of its own. The minimum focusing distance is just crazy. I can focus on something that's less than 2 inches away from the lens. The Samyang is just not capable of doing that. So with the 7 Artisans, you can actually shoot tiny objects up close and still get a wide view of the surroundings. And if you want to blur out the background, just open up the aperture to f2.8. Think about it, you can get bokeh on a 7.5mm lens, plus it's $139. That's nothing for what you can get. Alright, now for the giveaway. Here's what you need to do. 
First, like this video, then follow me on Instagram, and share this video on any social media platform you like. And that's it. The winner will be announced in my Instagram story. But don't worry about missing that announcement, because I will personally message you through Instagram to figure out the details, and you will get to pick the lens you want. By the way, please don't spam my Instagram about this. I won't favor someone because it gave me a bunch of sugar-coated compliments. So good luck. If you're into unique and low-cost gear like I do, definitely subscribe to my channel. And if you know some cool gear that I might not know about, let me know in the comments. That's it for this one. Peace.